morning. Welcome on this wonderful morning to Westminster Presbyterian Church. Um, you all know where you're at. So. <laughs> My name is Katie Hatlevig. I am a Presbyterian minister. I know most of you know me, and you'll probably see my young son running around and my husband chasing after him. Um, it, for those, that, Katie. <laughs> that's why I love you all so much. <laughs> yes, yeah. Although my husband did say, I don't think I've ever heard you preach, ever, <laughs> in real time. So, um, if anybody wants to watch him during the sermon, you're welcome to. <laughs> um, for those of you that don't mo know me, I am a chaplain with the Presbyterian Church, although right now I'm on sabbatical, so I get to hang out with you all a lot. Um, let us join together as we prepare our hearts for worship. Wonderful. All right, please join with me for the call of worship. Loved by God, inspired by Jesus, guided by the Holy Spirit, let us gather to worship, to pray, to listen, and to respond. Come, let us worship God. Let us build, or er, let's sing a hymn. Let us build this home, build a house. Um, you know this. You've been singing it a couple of Sundays.
as you join with me for the prayer of confession, we're going to read it um, with two voices, and then you all are going to join in on the very last, um, it's the last part of the poem. And this is a poem that is from the Church of Scotland. It's uh, what they are doing today for their worship service, and I loved it. So I hope you're okay that we brought it over from Scotland for us to use today. <laughs> <laughs> One news. A sacrifice of praise is the way. Praise that is pricey. Not easy words, ritually rhyming love to you, but costly honoring of your being at the heart of our living. No mere words on lips, but convictions in our hearts that without you, we would not be. And so, as if offering our hearts on an altar of sacrifice, the flame of fired up faith, lifting the fragrance of our love for you to you, we say that from the depth, deepest depths of our very being, praise be to you. Forgive, Forgive us for, for thinking, thinking of ourselves far higher, higher than we should. Forgive, Forgive us for, for thinking of ourselves far lower than, than we should. Are. Oh, uh, <laughs> sorry. Lord, Lord forgive, forgive us both, both ways. ways. Save us from the sin of pride and the offense of false modesty. Save us from being our own best defenders and our own worst critics. Let us be glad simply to be at the banquet, gathered by you in grace, ready to be put in our place, not for our merit, but despite our demerit not for our status, but despite our sin. All of you join in. Forgive us both ways, put us in our place. Only then can we face our worldly posture with heavenly poise. Amen. Thank you. Hear this good news. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. There is nothing that will ever change that. Know that God loves you and be at peace. I just realized my scripture is not here. Um, today, we are going to be reading um, from Jeremiah, which is a prophet, and sometimes the prophets don't have the nicest things to say to people, because they often are wanting change, and um, they, they're calling out the, the wrong that they see, and they're calling people to forgiveness and to repentance. Um, so the first time I read this, it felt very yelly. Um, so I'll just state that right there and hold that intention that it, it doesn't feel very good. It's like sitting and listening to your parents tell you why you should have been home earlier. Um, but this is a part of a longer speech in Jeremiah that if you want to go home and read it, it's actually um, chapter 2 through chapter 4. Um, and, but the part that we're reading is really the, the heart of what Jeremiah is saying. Um, he just keeps circling the airplane for the rest of the couple other chapters. Um, when you read it, just imagine that this, it, this is a lawsuit. It's written in the form of a lawsuit. It's where God is saying, you've broken a covenant to me, and I'm bringing suit to you. And so if you want to imagine that we are sitting in a courtroom or this is law and order or whatever it is, you can imagine that you set the stage that um, Jeremiah is speaking for God. So Jeremiah is the prosecution and the Israel is the defendant. Hi, do you want to help me read? Yeah? That is your daddy. Um, just be prepared, it indict, and indicts and judges Israel for breaking their covenant. And this is a very common literary style for Isaiah, Micah, and Jeremiah. So it, it's something, 
if we were the Israelites back at that time, we would be used to hearing um, this type of speech. It's not something I'm used to, so I just wanted to give you that preface. All right, you ready? So this is Jeremiah 2, verses 4 through 13. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, What wrong did your ancestors find in me, that they went far from me, and went after worthless things, and became worthless themselves? They did not say, Where is the Lord who brought us up from the land of Egypt, who led us in the wilderness, in a land of desert and pits, in a land of drought and deep darkness, in a land that no one passes through, where no one lives. I brought you into a plentiful land to eat its fruit and its good things. But when you entered, you defiled my land. You made my heritage an abomination. The priest did not say, where is the Lord? Those who handled the law did not know me. The rulers transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and went after things that do not profit. Therefore, once more I accuse you, says the Lord, and I accuse your children's children. Cross to the coast of Cyprus and look. Send a cater and examine with care. See if there has ever been such a thing. Has a nation changed its gods, even though they are no gods? But my people have changed their glory from something that does not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked and be utterly desolate, says the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, they, the fountain of living water, and dug out cisterns for themselves, crack cisterns that can hold no water. Did it feel too yelly? <laughs> if he wants to stand with me, that's okay too, hun. We're working on being present in worship. It's a hard new lesson. Okay, can you take a deep breath? going to talk to these people about what we read, okay? So did you see that scene in your mind? Hear the word of the Lord, the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord. Can you imagine um, Israel is sitting in the witness stand or wherever they would be sitting? And God's lawyer stands up and asks the witnesses, what wrong did your ancestors find in me that they went away from me? Then the lawyer decides to give more proof of God's faithfulness. Remembering what God did, he reminds them that God brought them up from Egypt, that God led them through the wilderness. And if you have forgotten the wilderness, it is miserable. And it is deserty, full of pits, lands of droughts, deep darkness, a land that no one passes through or no one lives in. And then the lawyer stands up and says, but I, God, brought you into a land of plentiful. We didn't stay in that desert. I brought you all the way through, and I took care of you, and I provided for you. You're sweaty. It's the proof of God's faithfulness that God cares. Normally, people would continue to follow a God that had provided for them or cared for them. But they forgot. And isn't that, Megan's been talking a lot about how do we remember our past? How do we hold on to the past and then grow into the future? And these Israelites, they had forgotten their past. They had forgotten how God had helped them. It's a very yummy muffin. And um, not only did they forget 
about God. But they started to chase things that didn't have value or worth. And it's not just the people, but it is going to all of the leaders, the highest leadership possible. Uh, God names the priests, the leaders of their faith, have forgotten God and chased after worthless things. The lawyers, the ones that held on to God's law, they've forgotten. The rulers, those that helped rule and govern the people, they had forgotten how God had cared for them. In fact, they used the word transgressed, which I had to look up. How do you talk about transgressed? But it's the idea of stepping over a boundary or stepping on someone that they broke the covenant. And even the prophets, those that call and talk about God, they've forgotten. If you want to know, here's a fun little fact for you. Um, if you read it in the original Hebrew, they uh, kind of put a little joke in there because they use the word, um, the word for profit or value is the Hebrew word that's um, ya'al is that word, which they actually use because it rhymes very much with Baal, which is the God that they're worshiping. So they're saying, you are worshiping Baal and you gave up ya'al. So somebody had to throw a joke in there somewhere with the Hebrew. But um, pretty much saying, Baal is no prophet. But that's what you are following. Bruce Birch, he talks about the overall theme of this lawsuit against Israel is that the people have given up a God whose saving grace has been demonstrated in favor of loyalties that are false, worthless, and ineffective. And then to really bring it to point, um, the last thing that they talk about is that you have given up the fountain of living water. And we know water is so important for all of us. I was at um, the Standing Rock protest uh, many years ago. And there in Lakota, we would say, mini wachoni, which means water is life. That is, water is life. And here, God talks about that being the living water. And these people gave up that, the living water. And instead, they tried to provide for themselves. They dug out cisterns. They tried to care for themselves. And now those cisterns are cracked and broken. And they're not providing for them what they need. And so what they've chased after is worthless. And they don't have what they want. So um, Jeremiah uses this to call back the people to God. In fact, a little bit after this, this is when they find a scroll in the, um, in the temple that hadn't been read in a long time, and they finally get to hear God's um, word again, and they have this huge revival that happens. But um, this is before that. So it, it has a good ending to this. But as I read it, it really made me think. Um, I saw some parallels to just things that are happening here in our own country and such. And that's why I decided to talk about Christian nationalism, which as I was writing my sermon, I wished I had chosen not to do. But <laughs> here we go. Um, What does this mean for us? I know here at Westminster, it, it means we are really good at, we've been seeking after living water. We seek after where we can love and care for all of God's creation and all of God's people. But I know here in our American climate, and especially in our politics, there are groups of people that want to claim separation. There are groups of people that want to be able to decide who are in and who are out. Um, and that's, uh, that's what I, what happened here to Israel reminded me a lot of what is happening within Christian nationalism, where they've taken faith, a, a lovely faith, an amazing faith, where God has been faithful, and they've picked and choosed, and they've kept the things that are helpful for them, 
but they've forgotten about God's grace. They've forgotten how God loves everyone. God doesn't pick and choose who gets to be loved. That's just something we humans do. And, um, and all of that, they've, they've, they've given up that living water and they've built their own cistern. I actually looked in, um, I don't know, Christian nationalism isn't a huge part here, Westminster, West Minister. Um, and I was researching, and it really is, Christian nationalism, it comes from um, white nationalism, where people feel that um, white people are better, are superior than others. And now Christian nationalism is where they feel that white pro Protestants are much better than other people. And they really have taken God's word and messed it up for politics, for power, for the things that I would say, Jeremiah would say, that is what you're chasing after is worthless. Um, and what's really tricky is how do we engage with that? Um, I know you all aren't Christian nationalists here at all, but maybe you have neighbors. Maybe you, I have family. Um, <laughs> In the Midwest and how do we engage with those how do we engage with people how do we continue to seek after the living water when others are using our faith to just reach after power and misuse that power and I think that's a hard hard question to answer what do we do um, the hymn that we close with is what it keeps coming back to me is, they know we are Christians by our love. That that's what comes down to the heart of who we are as Christians is that God loves us so much. And then through that love, that love changes us and we are able to love others. And that's what our faith is about. And if our faith is not doing that, or if we hear of other people's faith that isn't doing that, Maybe we need to figure out, and, and it's kind of a litmus test. Whoa, I think they missed something here. And they're reaching for something that isn't that living water. I know from, for me, arguing with my family does not work. Um, so that's why I gave you the quote from Mr. Rogers at the very beginning. This is what I hold on to very strongly, because it is my parents. And I love them dearly. I'm not a big fan of their politics, but I do love them. And I hold on to this. Love isn't a state of perfect caring. It's an active noun like to struggle. To love someone is to strive to accept that person exactly the way he or she is right here and right now. There's issues we also need to stand up for social injustice. <laughs> and we need to speak up about that. So I understand there is a time and place and that's very important. But also with family, I think it's figuring out how can we continue to love them and share God's love with them that maybe they'll see that living water again and be able to let go of the stuff that isn't giving them, that, that isn't the prophet, the ya'al that they're chasing after. If we want to remember our history, that's why I wore our, my Presbyterian stole today. Um, in our book of confessions, I highly recommend reading it if you want. It's a good uh, nighttime read. It'll put you to sleep. Uh, actually, I do love our book of confessions. And this is a big part of Presbyterians, um, Presbyterian USA, is that we value and hold true our confessions, the times that we've stated, this is what it means to be Christian. This is what it means to be faithful. And if you read through these, each one, they change a little bit based on what's happening in the world. The very first confession doesn't really like Catholics, and now we're, we're okay with Catholics. And so things change. Uh, but I was reminded of the Declaration of Barman, which it came out, um, I think it was signed in 1934 in Germany. 
and it was a collection of Lutherans, mostly Lutherans and a few Presbyterians that stood up and said, wait a minute, the German church, the church of Germany has really changed and they've left out some really important parts of what it means to be Christian. Because the Church of Germany had started to state that only those who are not Jewish have, or doesn't have any Jewish descent, only they can be Christians. And so all of a sudden, their race is being involved in whether you are allowed to be part of the church or not. And we have these pastors. Um, I have to look it up to remember. 139 delegates, they all come together and sign this declaration of this is what it means to be Christian. And the person that organized this ended up being taken prisoner and was held captive by, um, it, in here it says it was uh, Hitler's personal um, prisoner, but he was held for seven years. A lot of that was in Dachau one of the concentration camps. So there, there was a price for signing this. But all these pastors, they came forwards and said, wait a minute, the national church that is happening here has broken away from what God is called, what God has said is what Christianity is about. And they go back to say that Jesus is the only one that we are, are allowed to give allegiance to that it's not about us giving allegiance to people within our political system or a certain ruler, but we are called to, call, called to follow Jesus. And so we have moments, I don't think we're there yet here in America with Christian nationalism, but maybe there will be a time where we have to stand up and say, wait a minute, this is really far from what God and what Jesus has been teaching us. We're missing the the living water. And we can do what Je uh, Joshua calls us to do, Jeremiah, to remember, to remember how God has walked with us. God walked with those pastors that signed the Barman Confession. And we, we hold on to it. That's part of our church history. And God will continue to walk with us as well. So I hope none of us are called to be in that position. But if we are, I hope we are brave enough to do that. And maybe there's a, a bravery that we can get to stand with our families and gently say, I don't know, what do you think about this? This seems a little bit further from what God says and how we are called to love all people. And as the song we just sung, all are welcome. Every single person is welcome. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you so much for the word. We thank you that we are able to read it and hear it and that it is able to change our lives and call us to more wherever you are calling us. We ask that you would continue to fill us with living water and where there's those moments that we're reaching out for something that isn't really worthwhile, you would let us know. And Lord, would you continue to teach us how to love and how to love those that are really far outside of what you've called us to be. Thank you, Lord, that you walk with each and every one of us. Amen. Please join us in singing We Are One in the Spirit. <laughs>
is the time where we come and we bring our praises and prayer requests before God and each other and lift them up together. Megan actually sent me one, so I'm pulling that up. Please be uh, in prayer for Marcy. Um, she has COVID. It is mild, and the doctors say um, she'll wait and test, um, and no fun until she's better. <laughs> so, um, but please be in prayer for her as she heals from from COVID. Are there any other prayer requests or praises? Yeah. Uh, prayers for the Pearsons. Uh, Leslie has really all the symptoms and is positive for COVID and is having a miserable day. David is recuperating from his COVID. And uh, so prayers for the For those of you that didn't hear, be in prayer for the uh, Pearsons mm -hmm. as they are either at the beginnings of COVID or recovering from COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything? Yeah. Well, I have a Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. I, I thank us. I, I, we thank, I thank our community for Karen and Lucy. Oh, Big thanks, thanks for Karen, um, and for the was it the adventure supper last night? Yeah, it was the adventure group. The adventure group, yeah, yes, Carol. Uh, prayers for the teachers at City School of here that start Monday. Uh, the challenge is great. Yes. <laughs> Please hold our teachers in prayer as school starts. Huge prayers go with you, Hannah. Thank you. And, and if you're willing to pray that my cat, who is distressed by how hot it is at night, will please be quiet. So <laughs> <don't> <laughs> Maybe you need to get some living water for your cat. <laughs> Yes. Prayers for Megan's safe return as she returns home from a romantic cruise with her mother-in-law. <laughs> I hope they found water in the river. Yes. Let us pray. Lord God, you are a God of hospitality who invites us all to a banquet where the last may be first and where the humble and the powerful sit, switch seats. In gratitude, may we share your abundance without counting the cost. In thankfulness, we, may we host strangers as angels you have sent. May your spirit rest upon us so that we may find a place at your table and welcome others with radical hospitality. Lord, we come and we lift up to you the Pearsons. Would you please bring healing and rest and peace, Lord, to their household as they heal from COVID. And Lord, we pray for um, Marcy as well that she would be able to heal and that you would protect them from any of their long COVID symptoms. We lift up to you all the teachers who are starting to teach or those who have already started 
And especially we lift up to you, Hannah. Would you fill her with the peace that surpasses all understanding and patience and um, creativity and joy as she works with those students? And would you allow her cat to find rest and peace and quiet so Hannah can rest? Lord, we thank you that Megan has been able to get away and just have a delightful time with her mother-in-law and family. And would you allow her to have a safe return and that she would be rested and um, reignited with um, joy. And Lord, we thank you so much for all those that serve here at Westminster and that they give within our church. And we especially lift up to you, Karen. And thank you so much for all that she had provided and that with the um, adventure dinners as well. Lord, we lift up to you troops that are coming home and troops that are leaving for deployment. Would you be with them um, and with their families as they go through big transitions and always bring safety. We thank you, Lord, and we bring to you all the prayers that are on our hearts that we haven't spoken. Lord, we come and we ask that you would bless each and every person, the loud and the silent, the powerful and the powerless, Bless them differently. Bless the loud and proud with humility. Bless the quiet and crushed with esteem. Bless the powerful with silence. And bless the powerless with sound. Amen. Please join with me as we pray the prayer our Father has taught us, our, um, however you know the Lord's Prayer. So pray it however your heart wants to pray it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us enjoy special music from David. Spirit of a living God, wash over me. Spirit of a living God, wash over me. Melt me, mold me, use me, fill me. Spirit of a living God, Wash over me. At this time, we respond to how God has been speaking to us in our life, whether however we want to give. But this is our time to be able to give back to God and respond with our tithes and offerings.
As you can see in your bulletin, there's not too many today, but make sure you look through it. Tonight, or this right after church, the men are meeting, so um, all male identified friends are welcome. I always love how that's written, so I wanted to make sure to get that right. Um, any other announcements that you want to highlight? I'm going to put, um, you all are invited. I'm having a birthday party. My husband's gone, so we're going to just have fun. Since he's gone, uh, we're going to get a bouncy house. Um, it can be for the kids. It can be for the adults, whichever you would like. But um, I'll put my uh, the, all the details. But if you would like to come join uh, I and Hamish and a bunch of neighbor folks, for a birthday celebration on Saturday, September 10th at our house, it will come and go as you please, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. We needed to schedule around nap time so people can come <laughs> based on nap time. So, uh, but feel free to come. There's a bouncy house. There'll be ch sidewalk chalk, and there'll be good food and wine for us adults. But, yes. Uh, the women's group will start on the Women's group is starting up again after their summer break, second Tuesday, Thursday, second Thursday um, in September, right? Okay, and they're gonna meet here, um, downstairs, or right here, okay. Romeo and Juliet's coming up, make sure you get your tickets. That sounds exciting. And the women's retreat, so let us know if you need. And tonight is the last performance of As You Like It. Oh, remember that. All right. Any others? All right. He, let's stand and say together the charge and benediction, or you don't have to stand if you don't want to. I don't, can't remember what we do. But let's <laughs> say the charge and benediction. Go out, Go out into, into the, the world, world in peace. peace. Have, Have courage. courage. Hold, Hold on to what is good. good. Return no one evil for evil. Support the weak. Help the suffering. suffering. Honor all beings. Live love in word and deed. May the Lord be gracious upon you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with favor and give you peace each and every day. Amen. Let us hear our postlude and then we will join together and sing the piece afterwards. <laughs> 